I'd previously mentioned that uh, while there is this directive called ng in it, it's not really recommended. Uh, in this tutorial, let me start talking about why it isn't recommended. Uh, first of all, there is really not a lot you can do with ng in it, right? So you have this directive over here, and you can say ng init equals and execute some JavaScript logic. The problem is for something that's not as trivial as what you're seeing here, R of D equals nine, right? For something a little bit more complicated, it's hard to write all that logic in the HTML, right? So imagine having lines and lines of JavaScript logic over here separated by semicolons. It's gonna be messy. Uh, the other thing you need to think about is separation of concerns. We always wanna separate the business logic from the view. So you don't wanna have a lot of JavaScript logic in your markup. Uh, so why would we need uh, something like uh, this, right? Why would we need to execute JavaScript logic? Typically what happens is when you're rendering your page, you would wanna execute some business service or some business logic to get the data before you render the view. In this case, look at this simplistic example. We have this R of the equals nine. So there is some data gathering step. There is a step which prepares the data and then there is a view which renders that data. So there is always, in most of the applications, 99% of the time, there would be some business logic, some data processing that happens. And after the data processing happens, that's when the view gets rendered. And uh, we talked about how this is traditionally handled using a pattern called MVC. It's the model view and the controller. So you have the controller, which does all the business processing and the data, which is the model, and then the view, which reads from that model and then renders it, right? So we need to do something similar. We don't wanna have business processing logic, all the controller logic in ng in it. So imagine if you have some arbitrary JavaScript logic that you wanna execute before the view loads, right? So let me add this script tag over here at the end of the body tag that I wanna execute when the page loads. Now this is obviously a very simple console.log statement, but assume there is some business logic to be executed here. And this is initialization logic, right? You wanna do something like ng in it, but rather than have a hard-coded statement here, you wanna execute a function. So the way to do this in Angular is by using another directive called ng controller, all right? So I'm gonna get uh, a div over here. Let me wrap this whole thing in a div. And you will know why I'm doing this in a bit. So I basically have these statements wrapped inside this tip. Now, I can use a directive that comes with Angular called ng-controller to execute controller functions, to execute functions that contain this business logic, which is the C of the MVC, right? Any processing that needs to be done uh, before the view needs to render. And the way to do this is by doing something like this, ng-controller equals and then I give it a function name. So by doing something like this, what we're asking Angular to do is, we're saying, hey, Angular, I have this controller called main. I want you to execute it before you render this view, All right? So this ng controller is annotated to this div. So before Angular renders this div, it's gonna make sure it's calling this main method, All right? So Angular finds this main method, it's gonna execute it, whatever business logic there is, and then it's gonna render this div. So if you need some data for rendering the div, you can put this in the controller method and then access it in the view to render to the user, all right? So this is at a high level, the purpose of ng controller. You wanna execute a controller function before rendering a view. Let me however tell you that the code that you're seeing on the screen right now will not work. It used to work before in the earlier versions of Angular. I believe it worked till Angular 1.1 and it stopped working from Angular 1.2 onwards. So this is not recommended. Well, I would say it doesn't even work. So it's, you know, it's far from recommended. Uh, the reason why they kind of uh, made this not work is that they kind of enforced a convention about what a controller method is, right? You don't wanna have ng controller point to a global function. So what's main over here? It's a global function. That's what I did, right? I created a global function and I said ng controller equals that global function. This is not a good idea. Having global functions is not recommended. 
well, I think in programming, having a global anything is not recommended. But in this case, global functions are a problem because A, you are going to end up with a lot of global functions and it's going to be a mess. Secondly, the angular recommended way of doing things is to kind of register a function as a controller. If you're using ng controller and you're pointing it to any method, you want to tell angular beforehand that this is a controller method. So not only do you have to write this function main, you also have to register it with Angular. You have to say, hey, Angular, I've created this function called main. I want this to be used as a controller. And then Angular is going to say, okay, I got it. I've registered this as a controller. And then you go ahead and use ng controller equals and you give that function name and Angular is going to say, okay, I got it. You've already registered this. Now I'm going to execute it, right? So there is this extra step required to create a function and register it before using it in ng controller, right? So let's talk about how to register a function as a controller in Angular. 